Welcome to this week's Hospitality Industry Education Session. My name is Corinne Waldow. I'm the Economic Development Director for the Boulder Chamber. And I want to thank you for attending today's program and learning the most up-to-date information on Safer at Home for your industry. Today, you'll concentrate heavily on the food service changes that happened in the past week. We want to thank our partners at the local Boulder County Chambers and Economic Development Agencies, as well as the municipalities, for continually providing businesses with the resources they need, including these weekly webinars. Please post all your questions in the Q&A and I'll ask them on your behalf and try to get clarification if you need it. We will be sending out a recording of this webinar along with the resources that are mentioned within the next day. At this time, please welcome Zach Swank with Boulder County Public Health. Thanks, Grant, and thanks to the Boulder Chamber for continuing to co-host these webinars with us, as well as thank you to all of our other chambers and economic partners across Boulder County that help uh, bring these webinars to you. So today we're going to cover updates about Safer at Home, resources to support you, and we'll have plenty of time for your Q&A. So last week on the 22nd, Boulder County extended our face covering order that goes until the end of June. On the 25th, the state extended the Safer at Home order that currently goes until June 1st. However, I would note that um, you, there will, that's just the, the inflection point at which there'll be another update and more changes. Um, you should not expect the, uh, that add, you know, any chance of the order going away entirely on June 1st. Uh, on the 25th, private campsites opened. Yesterday, restaurants were allowed to be open for the first time uh, in a little while. Uh, and on June 1st, day camps and youth sport camps open. Uh, and then we will are expecting an update from the governor on uh, what June will look like for um, you know, all, all industries, but also of course, um, you know, hospitality in particular. Um, we do not yet know you know, what changes may be coming there. Um, and I would not expect, um, you know, drastic changes. I think we, you know, the, the, the track we're on is a, is a steady evolution. Um, but, uh, you know, we're getting common question, a common question we're getting lately is, you know, you know, is when is this all going to be lifted or when is this all going to be over? And I can tell you, uh, most assuredly, not June 1st. So long-term outlook, um, you know, until we have a vaccine or treatment, um, we will continue to need to have some public health safety protocols in place. So you can expect Safer at Home to continue to evolve, um, uh, you know, every month um, and sometimes, you know, a little more frequently, but uh, I would not expect Safer at Home to go away anytime in the near future, again, until we have treatment or vaccine, which is gonna take months for that to happen. And you know, part of the reason is you know, COVID-19 is still just as contagious as it always was. Uh, we are evolving how we deal with it with additional uh, testing capabilities, additional contact tracing capabilities, um, protocols in place that allow us to return to some aspects of um, you know, how we operate our businesses, but you know, other protocols in place that are gonna be there for uh, quite some time um, that uh, you know, are different but allow us um, to, you know, continue to, to, you know, operate our businesses and um, places of work. Um, but it's important to remember, you know, key to all of this is continue to social distance as much as possible, continue to stay home as much as possible, continue to wear your face covering. Uh, you know, if we are lax on those things, we are going to see an increase in cases and we risk backsliding, you know, having to go back to a more restrictive order which is of course a situation that no one uh, wants. So I wanna thank everybody for the feedback uh, that you contributed to our face covering survey. Uh, we received uh, almost 400 responses and the information informed our decision to extend our face covering order. One of the things we learned is that in general, um, uh, Businesses report good physical distancing uh, on behalf of customers while frequenting the business. That was, that was good to see. Um, definitely uh, there's room for opportunity there and we thank you for your partnership uh, and the steps that you're taking to encourage your customers, whether it's through signage or you know, uh, markings on the floor, et cetera, 
uh, to encourage your customers to continue to maintain that that physical distance. And again, you know, it's it seems um, you know it seems maybe a bit uh, ephemeral of like you know uh, you know we got to maintain this distance, uh, but you know quite honestly, is this a key part of of uh, making sure that we can uh, continue to limit the spread of disease and continue to keep our businesses open. Uh, we're happy to hear that in general, uh, folks found that the face covering order struck the right balance between uh, protecting public health um, and uh, you know, the restrictions it places on, on businesses. So that was good to see. And we were pleased to see that businesses were reporting that about 92% of the time customers were complying uh, with the face covering order while frequenting the business which is particularly good if you compare that to uh, some of our nearby counties who do not have face covering orders in place. Uh, so we're at 92% with a face covering order compared to Arapahoe County at 74%, Adams County at 84%, and Douglas County at 77%, all without a face covering order. So you really see the impact there. And another way the impact shows up is you can see Larimer, Boulder, and Denver County all have face covering orders. Um, but particularly in Boulder and Larimer, uh, you know, which have very similar, um, you know, demographics and characteristics to, to some of our other front range metro Denver counties, uh, in the last two weeks have seen significantly lower number of new cases uh, than our peer counties uh, on the front range and in the Denver metro region. And, um, you know, we thank you for all of your efforts to make that possible. Um, and we know it's not just due to the face covering order, uh, it's, you know, it's due to all of the, the physical distancing and the staying at home that everyone's doing. Um, but certainly, you know, we, we attribute some of this to the face covering order. So, you know, boiling down the face covering orders, you know, Boulder County's got one. Uh, there are requirements in Safer at Home. Uh, Erie, Superior, Louisville, Lafayette, they all have their own face covering orders. Uh, it can be a bit confusing. Um, we're in the final stages of putting together a, sort of a a chart that outlines the differences uh, you know, within each community and, and you know, where it's required, um, you know, which order is more restricted. Um, but in, in short, you know, if you're leaving your place of residence, bring a face covering because you can't necessarily predict when you may uh, be coming in, in contact with um, someone closer than six feet. You know, if you go into you know, get your haircut, you obviously need one there. Uh, if you're going into retail, you obviously need one there as well. So just bring your face covering with you. Um, yeah. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Zach Lustgarten, uh, who is our lead liaison for uh, the restaurant sector. Hi, everybody. This is Zach Lustgarten with Boulder County Public Health. Um, so wanted to talk about what our restaurant updates are, and that applies to several of you in the hospitality uh, world because you do have um, some sort of food operation in your establishment. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about uh, that is an update um, is the City of Boulder restaurant retail and right away uh, access permit um, process webinar. We actually had that yesterday uh, from 3.30 to 4.30. Um, but what, what we're really talking about there is the governor's uh, guidance that um, adjacent properties, uh, such outdoor spaces specifically, can be used for additional seating uh, when we have circumstances that prevent you from, uh, you know, you might have a small space indoors. Uh, the governor has called for um, us to have some real teamwork in this unique situation to allow for um, restaurants, retail food establishments, uh, including uh, your sector, to allow for this outdoor seating, just to increase the amount of folks that you can have um, and make, make sure that you make ends meet. So that webinar was actually yesterday, um, but look for guidance from uh, whatever city you are in to, um, I, I guess, team up with, with uh, your local uh, uh, city to allow for that extra seating. The other thing that I really wanted to talk about today, the, the vast majority of what we're gonna talk about is the reopening guidance for dine-in service. So uh, on May 27th, that was yesterday, dine-in service uh, was restored for retail food establishments. 
and um, we're going to look at what that guidance says. Boulder County did wholeheartedly adopt uh, what the state guidance said, so here we go. Um, so for outdoor dine-in service, um, essentially what we're looking at is social distancing of six feet or more. Uh, different parties would have to be a minimum of six feet apart, so all tables would be uh, spaced uh, six feet or more. All employees would be wearing face coverings in these situations. Um, and then disinfecting and deep cleaning of all shared surfaces between seatings. And again, like I mentioned in the previous slide, work with your local mun municipality to get authorization for expanding space uh, to accommodate for that outdoor dining, uh, whether it's adjacent or in sometimes non-adjacent uh, places, just to increase seating. The big change uh, that, that you're gonna see in the hospitality realm would be uh, a limit of 50% occupancy indoors um, or a maximum of 50 patrons. Uh, so whichever comes first. So regardless uh, of your indoor space, um, if you have a large facility or a small facility, um, you'd be looking at 50% occupancy or a maximum of 50 patrons, whichever comes first, very important. Different parties, again, must be six feet apart, so spacing of those tables would be six feet. All employees would wear face coverings in these situations as well. Um, you'd be looking at ensuring maximum ventilation by opening windows and minimizing uh, your air conditioning to the extent possible. So what we're talking about there is if you have a normal operating HVAC system, you should have no issue uh, with, with uh, airflow. And um, if you do have specific questions about if your, uh, your airflow is adequate, I would encourage you to reach out to um, an HVAC professional. Deep cleaning and disinfecting all shared surfaces between parties at each turnover, so same as outdoor spaces, and then keeping parties together. Uh, we do not, or the order does not uh, allow for commingling of parties. So, the idea is that it's sit-down service uh, with no congregation of folks by standing or um, we'll get into a little bit uh, more detail in the next slides of how that can happen. So party sizes, eight people or fewer, and um, the congregation piece, here, here we go. Um, you want to encourage reservations, pref preferably requiring them if feasible. Waiting parties must not congregate in the entrance and exit areas. And uh, if you do have a restaurant inside your, inside your, uh, your hotel, um, you would want them to actually wait in their cars or off premises until seating is available. You can do this through uh, text message or something of that nature. No communal seating. Some questions have arisen on this front and what uh, the order is, the intent is, so if you have long tables that allow for uh, different parties to sit next to one another, that would need to be eliminated. And then no self-service stations or buffets. This is uh, especially pertinent to this sector as uh, there's many continental breakfasts in hospitality um, sector. So it would need to be a buffet that has an attendant. There would be no self-service of any sort under this, under this phase. And if you uh, were interested in providing to-go baggies, those would still need to be handed out uh, by your staff. Another interesting, uh, sometimes difficult uh, issue with, with the breakfast type situation um, would be no seat yourself. So uh, you would have to have someone, um, an attendant or employee that would seat your, uh, your customers. And if there is a bar and it is being used for bar service, so in other words, preparing food or drink, you cannot allow folks to actually sit at that bar. However, if the drinks are being made in a separate area and it is a, a essentially just a, a bar stool, then you would just follow the social distancing that's required for all seating in, in your establishment. So 
as long as there's not a bartender and drinks are not being prepared in that space, you could use or utilize that um, bar stool or bar area as long as it's um, allowing for parties to be eight or six feet apart. Um, so some general things that we've seen since the beginning of, uh, of our restrictions would be floor markings to create proper distancing and flow of traffic and clearly marking closed tables. So if you have tables that are permanently affixed to the floor that can't be moved um, and can't be spaced six feet apart, you need to close those tables off in a way that does not allow for folks to sit there um, closer than six feet. Signage, uh, we're looking at uh, posting of um, uh, the following signs. If folks are sick, they should not enter the building. Um, hygiene and sanitation expectations as well. Um, so this is actually breaking down workspaces and we'll get into employees and customers as well for this guidance, but in the workspaces, again, signage, um, minimizing objects that are touched by multiple patrons. So if you have uh, dance floors, or you have darts, pool tables, shuffleboard, arcade games, things like that, we would, uh, under this phase, need to remove those or close them for the time being. It is recommended that you discontinue use of tablecloths or move to single use. Uh, the one way that you could have tablecloths is if they are laundered between patrons. So they come out for the patrons, they're utilized, and then they're taken away for laundered or for laundry, laundering, sorry. Disinfecting any shared objects like your uh, POS machines or you know, however you're using uh, check, your check system. Um, and then clearly uh, posting cleaning logs. So uh, what, what the order speaks to is going away from multi-use menus. So uh, looking at single use menus, whether that be paper, or menu boards, or creating like an online um, barcode where guests can use their smartphone to go to your online menu from an electronic device that would be encouraged. Single use or single serving condiments. So if you have ketchup and mustard and, uh, and uh, salt and pepper shakers that are out um, on your tables, those really for the time being should be removed and replaced with single use condiments. Bathrooms, we would look at uh, disinfecting restrooms at least every hour and blocking off stalls and urinals to allow for proper uh, distancing of these six feet. This might mean that you're gonna lose some stalls, um, but uh, that is where we are at, unfortunately. All right, and then obviously uh, providing hand sanitizer at the check-in area and throughout the venue, that's highly recommended. The guidance for employees, nothing really has changed here under the new Safer at Home guidance uh, from the governor. This has uh, been in place since uh, March 26th that we should be implementing, implementing a symptom and monitoring protocol and uh, this, this part is new, appointing one employee per shift to monitor uh, the public and your staff adherence to the safety measures. So um, if you have folks that are congregating, um, this, this employee would be um, someone that would uh, enforce uh, the, the guidelines. Requiring employees to stay home when they are sick, that is uh, the, probably the most important piece that you will hear today. If you have signs or symptoms of COVID-19, you want to make sure that those folks are uh, being um, asked to self-isolate. Six feet of distance at all times between employees. This can get very difficult in a tight kitchen space, but um, you can uh, encourage the six foot distancing through multiple um, methods, including um, shift staggering, uh, simplifying your menu so that you don't have, uh, you have kind of like a, a skeleton crew that would need to um, create dishes. Uh, or, um, I, would, I should say shift cohorting, which um, essentially means that the same shift members are working together every day so that if you do have illness that strikes one of those shifts, it might not strike the others. 
Um, face coverings for your staff and vendors are required at all times under um, those face covering um, mandates that Zach had gone over earlier. And then requiring gloves for any customer facing um, employees. And gloves are obviously uh, needed in the uh, kitchen space when you're working with ready to eat foods. But if you're not working with ready to eat foods, if, if you're handling raw foods, um, we would just ask that you are frequently washing your hands at least every 30 minutes. And in addition to every 30 minutes, every time that you enter the kitchen space. Um, so gloves, again, are always required with ready to eat foods. This is not new stuff. This is um, just straight out of the retail food bag. So we should all be used to that. Moving forward with employees. Oh, I guess I've kind of touched on uh, many of these areas already, but like I said, in the Colorado retail food regs, um, the, some of the cornerstones of food safety are not working when you're sick, frequent hand washing, changing your gloves between tasks, and using a fresh pair of gloves after each hand washing. So um, again, simplifying the menu so that you don't have unnecessary or additional staff there that doesn't need to be there, um, kind of uh, preventing congregation and uh, six foot distancing is what we're promoting. If you have team meetings, oh, sorry, could you go back one? Thank you. If you have team meetings, consider using a virtual meeting platform and or, and or meeting outside so that you're not in a tight space. Require employees that, uh, that bring in their belongings that they take them home every night, including water bottles. That's, that's kind of a big one. Um, and then if possible, provide your employees high quality face coverings. So, the, the face covering requirement says that, um, the, that uh, your employees need to wear a face covering, does not need to be a surgical mask or anything of that sort, but if you have the means to provide high quality face coverings, that's gonna only uh, increase the, the safety around, around your facility. And then for customers, unfortunately in this, in this phase, we are looking at sit down only, reservation uh, system and sign in, for tracking, um, no standing or congregating in a bar area, as I mentioned earlier, like uh, entry and exit points. Um, establish waiting areas on your, the outside of your, um, your establishment that promote that six foot distancing. Continue curbside pickup and delivery options if possible. Contactless payment options. Um, request facial coverings be worn by customers when they're not eating or drinking. So as they enter and exit, the, the building, they should be wearing face coverings. And you should consider refusing service to customers who refuse to adhere to those hygiene and physical distancing requirements. And again, making accommodations for individuals that are unable to do those things, such as takeout. Right here, we just have a decision tree. If, uh, if you're questioning, are we ready to reopen our, our, dining, um, our dining room? Here's some things that you should consider. Uh, this is a good CDC tool, and we'll provide this to you after uh, the webinar as well. Everything's being recorded here. Um, but it's essentially saying, can you meet the bullet points that I've gone over in the previous slides? And if not, you need to meet those safeguards. And once you feel that you have met them all, it's, you're free to open and um, just kind of monitor the situation. So here's some common Q&A that we've run into on the retail food establishment side of things. Um, will bars be open in this phase? Unfortunately, they are not able to open at this time. Uh, if they do not serve food, uh, they may not be opened. Um, there will be a reevaluation in June. And what if a restaurant reopens, um, the restaurant portion of your hospitality, uh, industry, you know, uh, if, if you're opening and you're not meeting the requirements, we're asking folks contact us because there's no way that we're going to know unless um, we have some assistance on that front. And I'll just exactly. hand it over to Amber. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that um, we didn't really have any specific hospitality updates under um, the new governor's orders, um, you know, just mostly a change for the restaurants, but just wanted to cover a couple of questions that came up in the last session. So do all guests need to wear masks to enter our hotel and be in public spaces, such as hallways? 
and stairwells, etc. And this is, uh, yes, we are requiring masks whenever you cannot maintain a six foot distance. So if you think about, you know, being in a hotel lobby or elevator lobby where there's other guests there as well, you would want to be wearing um, or, or requiring masks for that. Um, and then any specific requirements for short term rentals, um, for example, Airbnb. Um, basically, uh, the state has outlined that those are not allowed, any short term rentals are not allowed at this time. So hopefully we'll get more direction on that um, as Safer at Home evolves. And then are gatherings of 10 or more people allowed? How many outdoors versus indoors? And what is the timeline? Uh, we did not get any additional guidance for this. So gatherings of 10 or more people um, is the limit right now. And that's indoors or outdoors per event. Um, and we don't have any additional information um, currently for um, to exceed the 10 um, people right now. And then concerning gathering sizes with so many outdoor venues and spaces in the county, have you submitted a variance request or is there a plan to submit one to allow more than 10 people? And um, the county has not submitted any uh, variance request uh, to the state, so there is no plan in place right now to submit one. Um, and then with that, um, just a few more slides. Um, Boulder County cannot provide legal advice, so compliance is obligatory. Um, requirements are frequently changing as we've seen and um, you know we're constantly in the works with our attorneys to get clarification um, around these requirements as well um, and Boulder County Public Health is working to support you and then if you have any additional questions about compliance um, make sure to contact your attorney as um, we cannot provide legal support and then just a, a good reminder on outbreaks so if two or more of your employees um, with confirmed suspected COVID-19 are within a 14 day period, immediately report that uh, to Boulder County Public Health and then um, we will help you determine what actions are needed next. And here is uh, Boulder County guidance and tools and just wanted to check with Zach to see if they've updated the grocery and food service link on here. Zach L. Yeah, so um, I have just uh, sent the new checklist, um, the new guidance to our legal team. So expect it by tomorrow Great. Um, at the earliest, but um, it, it would be fair to say early next week at the latest. Great. And if you're, you know, what's in our checklist will mirror uh, what's at the state's website and, and in the order. So, uh, you know, if you're anxious to see, you know, or, to, you know, review it or whatever, um, if you go to the state, you won't be missing anything uh, from what's in our checklist. And then currently we do, just wanted to note, we do have the, a special event guidance, um, which was the one that I showcased last week um, up on the Boulder County site. And then uh, just a reminder where to go for more information. So the COVID biz or COVID-19 biz um, is the Boulder County site, uh, COVID-19 Colorado. Uh, .gov, Energize Colorado, Chamber of Commerce, Small Business Development Center, Industry Associations, your licensing agencies, and um, the city that uh, your business resides in. And we will still be continuing to have additional um, sessions, and we also, um, you can find now the weekly Spanish sessions through the Latino Chamber. And then just make sure to contact us um, through uh, the call center um, eight to five or a COVID biz at bouldercounty.org if you have additional questions. Um, and with that, I'll turn it back over to the chamber. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a couple questions. So Zach L stay on because a couple of them are about food service. Um, so I, I actually heard this question quite a bit, but can a party, you know, it says you can't have a party more than eight. Can a party, let's say, be four couples that are friends that want to dine together or do they have to be from the fa same family or household? Yeah, so um, we're, you're not going to be responsible for asking them if they're from the same household. Uh, if, if they're making reservations together, we're just going to call them a party. There's nothing specific in what the governor released um, that we could point to um, that would be required on that front. So. Um, yes, four couples that are friends uh, would be considered a party. And this is one of the reasons probably that they have a face mask when not eating or drinking um, requirement because you're still going to have some 
some conversations happening and so forth. Right, so that, exactly. You're probably you're probably congregating like those those friends are pro have probably seen each other outside of this restaurant. So, but you haven't seen those other folks that may be at the at the restaurant. So, yeah, face mask in and out. So I'm going to stay on you since uh, since I have another question. This one or both of you. How about ice machines? It seems safer to shut them down for now, especially in a hotel. Um, it would be hard to monitor. Yeah, so I would consider that a self-service situation. And the at least on the food side of things, we've called for no self-service of any sort. Uh, and they, they specifically call out um, drink machines and things of that nature. I think you could extrapolate that to ice machines as well. Um, I think it would be in your best interest to prevent that, although it is a bit of a gray area. Um, yeah, to be cautious, that would be my recommendation. So also in the hotels, there's often, you know, um, stations for coffee or water stations. What are some of the things that need to be changed for those, those stations that may not be in the restaurant, but are in other areas of the hotel? Yeah, um, I, I would still call the, that food service in, in my eyes. And um, you would need to, to monitor that and have an attendant. Um, so if you had a self-service coffee situation uh, and you had the luxury of having um, a bar or something like that, you should take those things behind the counter and you should actually be serving those drinks at this time. And Okay, now I have one for you, Ambra. Sure. Well, I guess it's for both of you since some, <laughs> some of it, it also do the restaurant too. Um, is the requirement for temperature screening of employees still required um, and is that enough? Do all the employees need to answer each of those symptom screening questions each shift? So Zach, do you want to answer for restaurant and then? <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to Brie or quickly look at what the guidance says. And what I'm seeing is that it says implement symptom monitoring protocols, including workplace temperature monitoring and symptom screening questions where possible and encourage sick employees to obviously use the symptom tracker. Uh, that's not the strongest language that I've ever heard. It doesn't say require, um, but in these areas where we have, you know, there's a lot of gray areas. There's a lot of areas in, in the food um, guidance that we are looking for clarification. It is always recommended that you contact your attorneys or your some legal advice to see those specific questions um, if they can give you uh, some information to fill in the gaps. But strongly encouraged is, is where I'm going to go with, with the food safety side of things. Okay, Amber on the hotel side. Yeah, and I believe um, they're saying, I believe any offices that are 50 or more, it's definitely required to do the, the symptom checks. Um, you know, the scanners right when people come in. But I think for, um, you know, hotel, you know, how many, you know, employees are you going to have at one time, maybe 25, that you would either need to have the symptom checks in place or have some kind of check-in with the employee, if, if that's them taking their temperature at home or, um, you know, or just a wellness check when they come in to make sure that they, you know, haven't felt symptoms. So it's a, it's a daily check-in with the employees. So in some, in some best practices have been a, a COVID coordinator per shift that those employees can then email right. or call or text their temperature and say, I'm not experiencing any of the listed, um, the listed uh, symptoms. Right. That's and I think on the guidelines, it does say uh, designate um, a person to, you know, be the main contact that is, you know, recording um, and keeping track of employees on a daily basis as well. Okay, so we, we, um, we, we have some comments that you know, some, some facilities have had touchless um, thermometers on order for a month and they're still haven't come in, but there is that opportunity if they are below a certain number for employees to do it prior to coming in and emailing it. You definitely yeah, don't want to use as long as you're just doing it on a daily basis, um, you know, you know, until you can get those um, thermometers in, 
um, you know, just check, doing the check-in even is, is something just to, to ensure that the employees are well. And some best practices with thermometers, you definitely want to use, um, yes. you know, <laughs> the, they've shown, you know, some people are like, I, I can't use the mouth thermometers, right? No, um, <laughs> you know, and letting each person grab the thermometer and take their own temperature, <laughs> is that a best practice or should they look at some other model? Yeah, I think that, you know, if you're looking um, to purchase one and um, on our resource page, we do have some some places that you can order um, as long as that information is still up to date when we posted it a month ago, I think. But um, but basically the kind that you want or the temporal thermometer, that's the scanning kind. So, um, you know, there's no there's no contact specifically with the employee. And if you have multiple people touching the thermometer, you need to make sure you wipe it down and sanitize it between, right. between usage. Just some of those questions we, we get um, about some of those and we've heard on some of the other calls. Uh, Zach S, this might be a question for you to explain a little bit more. Um, there's Douglas County and Larimer County have been approved for great variance for event venues. Is this something that Boulder County would consider submitting and adopting? Um. I've been emailing with folks about it today, I'll say that. Um, uh, but at, at this time, um, you know, would we consider it? Yes, perhaps. Um, are we currently considering it? Uh, no, not as of today. Um, but, uh, you know, it's definitely, you know, we're having discussions. Um, <clears throat> you know, certainly we would welcome your feedback on, uh, you know, how you think, you um, uh, such an event uh, could be done in a way that, that wouldn't lead to um, uh, in, in an increase in transmission. Uh, Amber has got the email address up there, uh, covidbiz at bouldercounty.org. Uh, you know, one of the purposes of hosting these webinars is you know, for us to give information to you, uh, but also uh, we do want to use this as a forum for you to give information to us. So. We welcome that feedback. Um, you know, your specific situations help us evaluate um, and, and, you know, evaluate, you know, the interpretation of the state order, um, as well as, you know, this exact scenario where, you know, would we want to, you know, deviate from the state's order. So your feedback is encouraged at covidbiz at bouldercounty.org. Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions out there? I have one that came in via email and it was uh, just because they weren't able to, they sent it in beforehand. Uh, the question was about event venues and if they're able to follow the restaurant guidance um, in any way for, especially for those numbers, if, if there's any talk about that or clarification on that or caterers, what, what should caterers do as far as, you know, they're, they're a licensed food service provider, but they're using another venue, where do they fall? I think as we mentioned, it's, you know, the limit set at 10 right now. And um, as Zach was explaining, um, you know, we really would really appreciate your feedback to see, you know, what kind of situ situations you're proposing. Um, but, um, you know, currently that's where we're at is the 10 limit. Hey, uh, so Ambra, hotel guests, if someone appears sick and we notice unusual, you know, coughing and so forth, they haven't finished the question yet, but what do you do when you have a guest that appears sick or you notice something unusual? <laughs> I, would, I, I mean, me personally, I would probably just check with them to, you know, see if they, you know, need, I mean, medical guidance or, you know, it could just be you know, a condition that they have. So I would tread lightly, but, um, you know, certainly if you do have a person with COVID symptoms, you want, would want to refer to um, our online guide um, on how to assess, assess those. Okay. Oh, and someone said it, it could be many things, so it's not up to, up to them to decide that that person has COVID. Um, they're having conversations on the Q and A um, in some ways, uh, but there are posters that says that if you are um, if you're sick, yeah. um, you know, with these types of symptoms, do not enter it. In that case, uh, reading, you know, they're just they're talking about like if um, people are sick, they should they 
Did they inform the hotel or um, does it need to be reported if someone comes back and says, I stayed at your hotel and I, I am sick. Do you need to report that as well? Or if they left already and they tell you later on, what do you need to do in those situations? Yeah, I don't think that we've had any specific guidance, but it would probably, you know, since they are staying a little bit longer than say a restaurant, um, I mean, I'd probably want to just get more information from them, you know. Um, I mean, you have your data logs of, you know, who stayed there, but if you do find out that someone was sick, I mean, you can certainly always reach out to us um, for additional guidance. Um, but uh, really, you know, an outbreak is, um, you know, two or more employees that are, you know, coming to work on a daily basis and there for extended, you know, period of time. Um, so, yeah, I would say, you know, if you have certain questions, certainly reach out to us, but I would just always refer to the COVID-19, you know, symptom tracker, um, you know, just for like how to identify, you know, people that are sick as well. Well, and Zach, as on an earlier call, I think it was manufacturing, the definition of exposure, it's not just walking by somebody, you know, briskly in a, um, in a, in a grocery store, what's what's that definition of exposure? Yeah, um, golly, Angel said it well, or maybe it was yeah, it was Alexandra. Uh, I mean, it's, all melding together a little bit, right? Yeah, um, there. I want to say off the top of my head, and, and Amber and Zach chime in here if you've got it differently, but. Um, I think it's something like within six feet for more than 10 minutes. Um, but, you know, the, the important thing there is that, you know, it's all, it's all, uh, you know, a gray area, right? Um, uh, you know, that's, that's one definition of exposure. And, and I think that's, you know, the, the common one that the state is using, but that doesn't mean that if you were, you know, within seven feet, you know, with masks off in a small room, you know, for an hour that that doesn't count as being exposed, right? Um, so, uh, you know, there has to be a, there has to be a line in the sand somewhere and then that's what, that's what's been chosen. But, um, you know, I would um, encourage everyone to think about, you know, that, yeah, certainly just walking by somebody briskly, um, you know, even if you came within three feet, you know, probably has a different risk scenario than, um, you know, being eight feet away um, in a small room all day long, right? Um, so it's gray. Um, and, you know, if, if you have a particular situation where you've got an employee um, and, you know, there was an event that happened and you're wondering, you know, how you should respond to that or how you know, the employee's wondering how they should respond to that, uh, email us at COVIDbiz. Uh, we'll talk with the epidemiologists and they can evaluate, you know, the specific uh, exposure under that specific condition. Um, but unfortunately, we can't just say, you know, here's what to do in all cases as a blanket statement. So Zach L, uh, some of the restaurant guidance is, is set around not wanting people to stay for long periods of time to to keep that exposure time up. Um, what, I mean, what are some of the things that make limiting the time you know, what, what are some of the best practices in that limiting of the time that people are just sitting there chatting and so forth? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that there's anything that says that you can't stay, you know, an extended amount of time to enjoy your meal. Um, but the idea is that when you're standing and congregating, you would have that, you would have more um, probability of having that close contact. So, the, that's where the floor marking encouragement comes from, um, you know, making sure that there's a certain flow through your facility, um, that you're not having bars open, um, because, and dance floors for that matter, because as much as a business tries uh, to prevent that from happening, if you have uh, nothing set up to, to assist you there, it's going to happen. In other words, like if you have entertainment, um, people are going to want to dance. And if you have a dance floor available, they're, they're going to be in close quarters. But um, no, like certainly if you're coming for a sit down meal, there's, there's no limit to how long that meal can be. Um, it's just in and out. And that's why we want to keep folks in their own party and not intermingling between tables, things of that sort. So 
speaking of entertainment, the original draft guidance said, you know, no entertainment. What what is the we were getting a lot of questions, especially in Boulder, wanting to employ local artists and so forth. What are the rules on entertainment? Hotels may be interested in this as well. Uh, I can speak to it a little bit on the food food side of things. Um, so the entertainment piece has kind of been dropped from the, the most current guidance. Um, so if you have outdoor eating space um, and you have uh, entertainment, just keep in mind that that those folks that are the entertainers or um, the musicians or what, what have you uh, are going to be going against your number, okay? So for how many folks you can have either in the indoor space or, um, yeah, we'll, we'll say it's indoor space for this, for this scenario. Um, and also they're gonna take away from your floor space, right? So uh, the more um, equipment and folks that you have in there for, for that purpose, it's gonna take away from your seating. Uh, so the, in the idea, like I said, is that it is going to encourage congregation. So you'll, you would have to actively, you know, discourage that, <laughs> which is hard to say, don't have a good time, <laughs> but just keep that in mind. Uh, so there's a question about the, the self-service, um, five gallon Eldorado water, um, and water fountains. Uh, what should be, are those considered self-service? What should you turn off your water fountains? Yes, uh, if, if, especially if there's some type of hand manipulation involved, you know, you have to uh, pull a lever, you should remove those. Um, if you have one of the water fountains that allows for a bottle to just be placed under it, and it's an automatic sensor, uh, I think that's one of those gray areas that we can point to. But if there's any type of manipulation of any sort that would be considered self-service and there's going to be high touch points, then you would want to remove those. Just, just the same as you did with the ice machine. I think those are pretty good um, uh, uh, yeah, sadly, parallels. I think, I think that we have to go back to the single-use water bottles. For, for those scenarios. And, you know, you think about those common touch areas, your buttons for your elevators, all that stuff that needs to be clean on a regular basis because you're gonna have multiple individuals. All right, I think we've answered all the questions and we're kind of at time. Thank you both, or thank all three of you um, from Boulder County Public Health for being here, for going through the food uh, requirements, especially with this group because they do, they do have food service in a lot of the hotels. Um, we want to thank all of you for showing up today, getting your questions answered, and for continuing to provide feedback. We'll send a follow-up email with all of the resources, including the updated re restaurant requirements, um, and we'll see you next week. You know, June 1st is the next level where we're going to hear further guidance, but it doesn't mean everything's going away. Um, it's just further guidance. If you have any questions in the meantime, covidbiz at bouldercounty.org, or you can just reply to my email and I'll um, get it to a person if, if that's easier for you. <coughs> we hope everybody has a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much.